I think what Albert does is he, he makes clothes that are really that are really sensitive to women's emotional agendas. The clothes are nostalgic and romantic and sentimental, but not in obvious ways. Perhaps the most well-regarded designer of recent years is Albert Albaz. Universally lauded by fashion editors and retailers, the Moroccan-born designer with a penguin-like waddle was destined for fashion from an early age. I started in fashion when I was five years old, I guess. Mm -hmm. And my uh, mother asked my teacher at school, is it normal that my son is catching only ladies? And that teacher was smart enough to tell her, leave him alone, don't stop. And nobody ever did stop. At the same time, I know that if I start all over again, I will go to medicine, I will not go to fashion. At the age of 26, El Paz moved to New York City and would land a job with respected American designer Jeffrey Bean, where he would spend seven years at the master's side. If I have to tell you what is the essence of my school at Jeffrey Bean was the fact that he was the one to teach me that between a front of a sketch and a back of a sketch there is a body. And what we are actually dealing in fashion is what's in between between the front and the back, which is the woman. El Baz left New York in 1997 when he accepted an offer to design for the French house of Guy La Roche. Within a year, his talents were noticed by Yves Saint Laurent and Pierre Berger, and El Baz was offered the job of designing the Pret-a-Porter for the venerable house. With the unexpected sale of the house to the Gucci Group in 1999, just three seasons into his tenure, Albert was abruptly out of a job. It happened, and I have no bad feeling about it. And it had to happen. There is another company that bought it. It's not the first time that it happened. And this is it, so I had to go, and it was painful, but we ended it, and I think that we ended it quite elegantly. And today I'm happy it happened because I'm really okay where I am. In 2001, Albert found himself installed at the dusty house of Lanvin. The 100-year-old French maison was in need of a youthful infusion, and El Vaz did not disappoint. Since then, his style has evolved into a combination of freeform creativity and refined couture techniques. For me, the story of the house is the story of the logo. The first reaction is, when you get to houses, let's change the logo, let's change the shape, let's change the windows. And I didn't want to change the logo because I think that the logo is like a name. You can change it and you can sell it. And I kept the logo because for me a logo was a story of protection, was a story of loyalty, was a story of love, was a story of relationship. All aspects that Albert incorporates into other divisions of the brand that he now oversees, including the menswear collection. The thing that he's genius with is you can take his one dress and put it on a hundred different women. It's going to be a different dress on each and every woman because their personality still comes through. Somebody told me uh, a few weeks ago that she loves wearing long pants because she has that kind of sensation that men fall in love with her when she wears long pants. It's nice that men fall in love with her, but I love also to dress women that will fall in love themselves, kind of independent women, not puppets. And that's the kind of women I love. 